Welcome to Around Around Table. This is the episode where your favorite friends from the Wreck My Podcast get together around a round table virtually and talk about nothing and everything. I'm here with my guest this week. He's got a new attitude. It's Craiger. Yeah, I'm, I'm attitudinal. And then I'm here with my other guest. He's what it sounds like when the doves cry. It's Joe. <laughs> I didn't even know doves cry. Yeah, you Is didn't know thing? Prince has a whole song about it. Yeah, Prince, the Prince song. This is what uh, it sounds like when the doves be honest, cry. You I don't, don't think I've ever, I don't think I've ever heard a Prince that's, song. That's, that's, that's what a dove. You've heard a Prince song. You've definitely heard I a have. Prince song. Yeah, yeah like party song. like it's 1999. Oh, who can forget about the song? Classic. I thought that was a saying. No, oh, that's a song. <laughs> what about what about chocolate? What about chocolate rain? Isn't that no? A that's YouTube purple show? rain. I, I know. I'm kidding. <laughs> I have heard of Purple and then, Rain. I know it's a movie. I've never seen it. I've never heard it. Yeah, you shouldn't. You shouldn't see it. It's not good. <laughs> and then I'm your host. If you're lost, you can look and you will find me on Rec, my podcast. Uh, Jordan is my name. And so uh, we are Sans Cam this week. He had something better to do with family or something like that. So, you know, we just let him go. <laughs> Real life stuff, Sans. you know. It gets everywhere. Yeah, I hate Sans. Of course, I just watched Revenge of the Sith last night because Madison wanted to watch it. And uh, this is why I love her so much. <laughs> she requested Star Wars that's, and I that's, obliged. That's a big win. Yes, it is. Uh, speaking of a big win, we have a new thing starting in 2021 where our patrons are going to be able to win something every month. So we're going to start doing a giveaway. And no, we aren't copying professional <laughs> casual network. They aren't the ones who gave me the idea. I've been wanting to do this for months and I've been waiting because I have a giant drawer full of prizes that we were supposed to give away at live shows back when we were doing that. And then I moved sure. and then I put them away and then I forgot about them. And then I just realized, hey, we haven't been giving away things. So let's do it for our patrons. So how this is going to work is if you're a patron of ours at the $3 tier or higher, you're automatically enrolled every month to win anything that we have here. When you win, I will give you a list of stuff. There's anything from Star Wars to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Assassin's Creed, Zelda. I think I even have the Princess Bride playing cards in there. So there's a little bit of everything for everyone. What are we going to say, Craig? Inconceivable! Exactly. Like so... Is this like a Go raffle or how is this working? <laughs> yeah, it's a raffle. So every the first of every month, I'll do a raffle of all the names of our $3 tier or higher patrons. I'll pick one out. We'll probably do it on our Instagram story. I'll reach out to them, let them know, hey, what do you want to do? And then for the next two months, that person can't win. So it's not like someone can keep winning every month. So the earlier you win, the more prizes you're able to pick from. I even have a bunch of DVDs in there. I have like robocop 2 i think i have an acdc live thing from 2009 <laughs> like some random stuff <laughs> maya the b2 <laughs> so you can pick whatever you want <laughs> but speaking of patrons uh I, we have a new patron ishmael vega he is yeah. uh, gonna be in the raffle in january it's someone that craiger knew and also has come to a bunch of our live shows and has been supporting us yeah. for a while and now he supports us financially. So with all that being said, you, fellow listener out there, should go and give us $3 a month because not only are we super appreciative of it, but you can yeah. win things. You you get extra content for it. You get uh, usually a little toy or something when you sign up, and then you're also signed up for this raffle. Yeah. And it's less than the cost of, of loot three crate. tiny cheeseburgers a month. Yeah. So. <laughs> and hey, there's still the tier where your I will take you on a coffee date, you know? We never know how long that's going to be up there, so get it while the mm -mm. getting's good. I, I might I thought that was the get tier rid where the creator pays them. <laughs> no, no, that's you're thinking of Kreger's OnlyFans account. Uh totally oh, different. Okay. Yeah. Kreger you, pays people become to be a member, fans of his own. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Oh, man. Uh, uh, the final thing I want to mention here in the housekeeping is that um, I was I took Craiger's place a week ago on the space between talking about the Mandalorian. So if you <laughs> want to hear uh, some people from Wreck My Podcast wrecking other people's podcasts, go check out the space between. You can hear either Craiger or I on most of the episodes. 
And also, I am on this week's episode of Drinking Alone with Friends. Uh, they are good friends of our podcast. Uh, cool guys, Chris and Obert did a show with me because their buddy, Tud, who's normally on, uh, had to do some surgery stuff because he had some type of cancer and he got some surgery oh. where it all got taken out. And now he's okay. on the recovery. He's doing good. He's awesome. They're all awesome. Uh, go check them out. Go give them support. He should be back in the next few weeks, hopefully. We'll see how it goes. Um, but yeah, I'm on there. So uh, go give well, that a listen if you haven't gotten enough of me yet. Well, Drinking Alone with Friends, you can also get Craiger on your show. He will gladly. I'm I'm, I'm trying to podcast slut myself out as much as I can. So there uh, you go. You heard it. Next time you need to get yourself out. The one, the one show I will not go on <laughs> is Breaker and Bane's Power Hour because those guys are just trash. So What are you talking about? Breaker and Bane oh, are my favorite. No. Oh, did you listen to their most recent um, Elite Eight Showdown? Yeah, the one where they're talking trash on Chuck and Tim. Yeah, and like, first of all, they're talking trash. Their show and their sound quality sounds terrible. Big no underscore way. What are you talking Dick about? They're Bane. the best. No, big underscore tiny Dick Bane. Just you need he needs to get brought down a couple of tiers. Like you don't I'll go after my 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 two dads, a big Chuck and big Tim. You don't go after my well, dads. What about Joe Janeiro? You know what? Jo- Joe Janeiro have- is his his. Listen, Grandpa Pop? in the podcast world, <laughs> I'm uh, also a dad sled apparently because I have way too many podcast dads. Yeah, and still you do don't have get way too many podcasts or Chris. I don't get any Christmas presents either, so go figure. But no, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, so so here's the thing. I love Breaker and Bane. I think their sound quality is amazing. I think they're super funny. And you know what they are? They, they're also the creators of the Power Hour Pro Wrestling, which I am the current champion <laughs> of. And I have it on good authority. I haven't finished it yet, but this last Saturday, their pay-per-view, Jingle All the Way to Hell, just le- just got released. And I heard that some that friends cookies? of mine... No cookies. Uh, my friends, <laughs> friends of mine came out to help me retain my championship on the latest podcast. Really? Or, on the latest ep- on the latest pay per view of their show, and uh, we are now the new faction of Power Hour Pro Wrestling. We have Craiger, we have Joe, we have Cam, yeah. who are all on it, <laughs> helping me keep gold. Well, you know what? You know what? their their content is just so terrible. They do need to bring talented people like us on there to make their stuff watchable and listenable. So. Man, Craig, you are hating on these guys. You know what? You know what? I'm sorry, I'm At least sorry, they I'm, do. I'm throwing down the gauntlet. I I see. You got nothing on Thanos. That gauntlet is thrown. <laughs> so I I feel like the problem is at least they record in a timely manner. When Big Chuck and Tim recorded that episode where they had Breaker and Bane of a, a, a like a segment of their show on, that was from like two months ago when they said that. <laughs> <laughs> So oh, let's get a little bit more relevant with our timing here, people. Uh, <laughs> I, I like I message uh, Big Chuck and Tim things, and I know I won't hear about it for two months because they record so dang early. <laughs> um, like, maybe that's the key. That, that, maybe we it, should do that. <laughs> I mean, it, it makes for for like if we can't record like a week or so, like having stuff in the backlog helps. But I, it's kind of funny because like they Simpsoned me really hard, like. Uh, I think I told you about this, Jordan, how they were like, oh, you know, you can sponsor this bracket and do it. And I was thinking about it for a couple weeks. And then, like, I was listening to their show. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to sponsor it. So they have to, like, talk shit about themselves and stuff like that. And literally, as I'm thinking about that, they say, you know, Craig, you should put money into this. (laughs) Yes. They were very mad that you said you were thinking about it and never did it. But Wreck My Podcast did it. So Mm -hmm. you will be hearing them. In give about us three to a five lot of accolades. business months. I was gonna say, in a three yeah, to and five <laughs> months. Check check in sometime <laughs> next months. year. <laughs> so here's the thing. Our first segment, I just said, is the the Disney dump segment because they took a massive dump on our collective minds here with literally like 50 things they just announced for the upcoming few years. I mean, you could also years. call this stoked on this. 
You could. <laughs> and I figured this is probably just going to take the place of stoked on this for the most part because this is probably everything we were stoked on. But let's Basically. let's talk about some things that Disney said. So let's start with um, first off. In the whole movie realm, there's the news that HBO Max is getting all of Warner Brothers movies for 2021 straight to the platform, which is is huge. Cool cool for me, not great for movie makers. (laughs) Yeah, that (laughs) which is fine that that I'm interested to see how that goes, because that could either like like we don't know. This is this is as as some kids would say, we are going into the unknown, you know, so what I think what what kids are saying that. (laughs) Frozen 2 kids. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, then they're stupid because they should be watching Disney Plus. <laughs> yeah, not not HBO Max. What what well, movie I are you most HBO excited Max, for? Uh, I'm excited to see Wonder Woman 80, 1984. I think that's going to be cool. Mm-hmm. And if all the Warner Brothers stuff is going to be on there, um, Robert Pattinson's Batman, that's going to be on there. Oh, really, New Suicide Squad really would be on there. <sighs> Matrix uh, 4. You got the, Oh yep, gosh. exactly. So there's a, a ton of things that's actually going to be on there that's going to be great. I mean, Warner Brothers does a lot. They do the Conjuring movies. Mm. They do uh, so many things. So the fact that it's going to be coming to streaming the same day that it should be in theaters, I think is incredible. And I think it's going to complete if if it's successful, will completely change the way studios even think about how they put movies in theaters yeah. and things like that. Well, Which here's the problem. Kinda, um, they they really frustrated their collaborators. So Christopher Nolan was very upset, and Denis Villeneuve, the guy who's directing Dune, probably the biggest movie that's coming out in the past like five years, the guy that did yeah. Blade Runner 20, 2049 or whatever yeah, yeah. it is. Um, they were not happy with this decision. Uh, I get it. I get why. But oh, I if get they why are br- if they're burning bridges with their creative minds. Warner Brothers may not be as on the top for very long if these guys are going to take their their creative ideas elsewhere. So we'll see I what mean, happens. Look, those two guys are huge names. Granted, it's that's a given. But and they are also adamant about their movies being shown in theaters. However, there is mm-hmm. plenty of other people who are good, who are perfectly fine with streaming platforms like Taika Waititi. Yes. Hundred percent, because Taika Waititi is more his movies rely more on de- character development and comedy, whereas people like Chris Nolan and Denis, uh, they are very spectacles. You want to see them on the big screen because it's cinematic. Like Dune, right. I probably won't watch Dune at home. I will probably wait till uh, well, my theaters are open here, so I'll probably just go see <laughs> Dune in the theaters because I want to see Dune on the big screen. That's like a crazy and Texas doesn't movie. believe in science. Yeah. Like no, Texas <laughs> doesn't believe in science. That, uh-huh. That's a, uh. that's a, that's what I was gonna say. Is like, I don't. I'm I'm excited for certain aspects of it, but like, I love the movie going experience. Like I love mm. it like so much. That's a. It depends. We had a terrible movie going experience for the movie Solo. Joe, you you kind of brought up something really important that I forgot about. Like, uh, two years ago, I would say. When I had like the run of like three or four like very 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 bad movie going experiences, and uh, yeah, you're 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 bringing up a rage inside me that I forgot I had. I would yeah, I would probably say of the last I don't know five times that I went to the movies. Which granted, I don't go to the movies a lot, and so that's probably was five times in the span of what maybe two years three years, maybe even at that point. Um, But I would probably say at least 50% of them wasn't a favorable movie going experience. At least 50% of them. Yeah. Yeah, So go ahead, Jordan. I was going to say it it does. It does. uh, There's certain people like us where having other people present doesn't really make the experience better, but some people love that. Well, it depends. Like if, if you're just going to sit there and quietly watch the movie, eat your popcorn, that's fine. But when you're talking to each other, you're making your comments, you're hitting the back of the, the seat of the person in front of you, just being a public nuisance. That's when it becomes an yeah. issue. Yeah. Eating popcorn with your mouth open right next to me. That's that's <laughs> I, I, you should be water. Oh, did you go see that. a movie with Kevin DeLogero? 
<laughs> um, i will oh, say i don't mind if people are talking if like we're at a star wars movie and like something cool happens on the screen everyone's like oh my gosh what blah, blah, blah. like they're excited but when there's a bunch of teens who probably didn't pay for the movie their parents paid for it and they're sitting in there having a full conversation thinking? while you're trying to hear dialogue mm. it's like guys just go give me your 20 bucks and then I'll kick you in the nuts and you can just leave. Like I, I don't want you here. Yeah. And like, don't be here. When I went and saw, um, captain, um, Marvel, captain Marvel. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Captain, yeah. captain Phillips. There's so many, there's so many Marvels. <laughs> I forget which one. Like, so yeah, captain Marvel with Brie Larson and yes. these two probably junior high girls were sitting next to me and just on their phones and talking the whole time, like kicking like the the wood in front of them and stuff like that, and oof. and then like, and then after the movie ended, one of their moms came down from somewhere else and was like, "Oh yeah, we're ready to go." I'm all like, "You made me sit next to your terrible kids. And you didn't have to deal with it. Like, <laughs> screw you, madam. Screw you." You know what kind of sucks with all of this happening and theaters closing down is that I probably won't be able to have the experience I used to have where when I saw The Rise of Skywalker, I went at 8 o'clock in the morning on the Friday it opened, and it was me and maybe 20 people in the whole theater. That won't happen anymore because there's there's going to be so many theaters shut down, and they're going to be consolidating a lot of this where there won't yeah. be theaters that are that empty or time slots that early anymore and stuff. So I'm like, well, this kind of sucks because now I'm going to have to go to a theater with more people because of yeah. stuff. So it's like that weird line you have to walk. Either that or there's just going to be more of those theaters that have like that niche to it where it's kind of like mm. I pick or so the little bit more of the upgraded theater experience, which I'm all for yes. on that. If you see all Warner brother movies, it uh, on HBO Max, and then when Christopher Nolan's film comes out, you go to one of those to see it. I think that sounds great to me. I would totally do that. Yeah, I mean, I, that's essentially what I'm doing now. I probably see four movies a year, if that, because the rest I'm fine watching at home. That's right, and so exactly. the movie going experience is more of an experience now, and you may have to pay a little bit more for that experience, but. If it becomes something that you don't just go do every weekend, kind of how it was in like the 90s and stuff, mm -hmm. it, it's worth it then because the experience is a bit more fun. And it's maybe like flying. Like back in the day when flying was more prestigious, people would wear suits and it would be like this good experience. Now you go and there's like people in their pajamas and they smell like crap and it's just awful and you hate it. It's like maybe we do want to make this more of like a experience where you got to pay for it, but at least it's in, uh, more enjoyable. Yeah. Enjoyable. The yeah. first time I flew, um, I went uh, flew on Delta with my grandma when I was in like middle school and you there was a dress code for flying in Delta back then. You There was a oh, dress dang. code. Yeah. Just I actually wear think clothes. that's kind of that cool. Was a dress it's like code. the 60s, like Pan Am. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like that. Anyway, we went on this huge tangent because we're going to talk about some Disney shows. Now, let me ask both of you first. Marvel Disney shows that were announced. What is your favorites that you heard announced for Marvel? Mm, um, I love Loki so much. Although, I... That trailer I looked really, good. I, I'm really excited. I may be the cynical side of me, but I'm just like, this is basically number five from uh, Umbrella Academy or whichever... <laughs> which would like I'm like this that's all I'm like that's what it is basically actually yes totally and it looks like it's weird <laughs> like umbrella academy too which i appreciate right? but i i can totally see that yeah <laughs> but i'm also like loki is one of my favorite marvel characters like it's gonna be so good yeah that's definitely gonna be good comes out may 2021 yeah. joe how about you which it's one only is like was your the, I, I will yeah, sorry, six months what, i will say no all the a lot of their shows they said they're only doing like six to eight episodes like oh yeah I hope, but i like that i hope they're long well i'm okay with it as long as they're 45 minutes to an hour if we get that 20 30 minute mando stuff i will angrily do nothing i actually don't mind it because with how many shows they've announced imagine trying to keep up with like 200 hours of content like like here's a 24 episode season at an hour a piece and that's just one show we have 30 other shows like that would be yeah, way too much that's true i was just talking to someone yesterday and like we we're talking about like yeah, some anime shows and he was like naruto i'm like or, or, or no naruto or <laughs> naruto i feel like i'm pronouncing that wrong <laughs> naruto. no it's, i think it's naruto <laughs> 
Naruto. No, sorry. Yeah. that was the that first one. Better. Naruto is the sequel. <laughs> <laughs> Naro one and Naro two. So, oh, how do you pronounce it again? Because I've already forgotten. Naruto. Naruto. <laughs> Naruto. So he's talking about Naruto. I'm like, oh, it's really good. I want to start watching it. And then he told me there's 900 episodes. I'm like, oh man, I'm a completionist, and I don't know if I got time for that. Yeah, dude. <laughs> anime is anime is hard to start. <laughs> like, yeah, he, he was like, I'm only 400 episodes in. I'm all like, you're a better man than I because that's a lot of episodes. That's funny. I think I'm going to name this show Naru One and Naruto. <laughs> Naruto. <laughs> Ow! I stubbed my Naruto. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Joe. What's your What's your favorite thing on the Marvel side here that you heard's coming out? Uh, so I was actually impressed with the uh, Wandavision trailer because uh-huh. I honestly thought it was just going to be you know different scenarios or different looks to what Wanda and Vision essentially could have been. But it looks definitely looks like there's much more of a storyline to it and much more of, I don't know, it looks like something a little more sinister going on on why those visions and why there's like eras and decades. Well, let me ask you this. Are you familiar with the House of M event? No. Okay, so it's a comic that's really good. I actually just wrote an article about a character of it. And um, it's it's probably one of the best modern X-Men stories. Oh, no, did we lose Joe? And we lost gone. Joe and he's continue gone. Talking. But anyway, continue. Talking. Yeah, we'll back. see if he comes back. But anyway, uh, House of M, <laughs> I think that's what it's going to be based off of. I think we're going to get speed and Wiccan, which is uh, Wanda, uh, the Scarlet Witch's kids, which would be cool yeah. because one of the shows where it's announced is the Hawkeye show, which has his daughter, oh, Kate Bishop, have a I think hot guy daughter, show, right? The hot guy show. Yeah. A Hawkeye show. Um, yeah. Jeremy Renner playing Hawkeye, teaching Kate Bishop to take over the mantle mm-hmm. of Hawkeye, which is one of the young Avengers and speed and Wiccan are a part of that. I, so I've, I've seen some pictures. I think Haley Steinfeld's going to be really good in that role. I think she'll be great. And then we, there's an announcement of an iron heart with Riri Williams or whatever her name is. Uh, that's another young Avenger. So yeah. we have a lot of young Avenger stories coming up, which is super cool. But um, I agree with Joe. I think WandaVision coming out January 15th is probably the one I'm most excited for. But we got a trailer for The Falcon and Winter Soldier, which comes out mm-hmm. in March, which looks great. Uh, we have a What If animated series. That did you watch I'm that really, trailer, Craig? I did not. I'm really excited about that, though. Doctor Strange fighting Doctor Strange. And there's a Peggy <sighs> Carter who's Captain America. Like, oh my this God. show... <laughs> Yeah, it looks awesome. And then we saw there was a behind the scenes trailer for Miss Marvel, which is Kamala Khan, I think is her name. Uh, Something in Miss Marvel. Lines. Yeah. And then we have uh, Moon Knight still in the works. She Hulk, which I just heard that Tim Roth is going who played the bad guy in the first Edward Norton Hulk movie is going to be in She Hulk. Oh, and no way. also, yeah. And also R- Mark Ruffalo is going to be in She Hulk. And then That's we cool. have Armor Wars which is going to be yeah. uh, Rhodey is going to be in that. And then a secret invasion story too, which secret invasion has been set up for a while now with the scroll and everything. I don't know. I don't know if you guys mentioned it, but uh, guardians of the galaxy Christmas special and I am Groot. Oh yeah. Yes. Uh, and Ty- Taika Waititi is doing, no, no. Uh, what's his name? Uh, James Gunn is doing James it. Gunn. I believe. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's move over then into Star Wars stuff because that's what we really want to talk about. All the Star yes. Wars announcements. I'm going to let Craiger lead this one off here because I'm sure he has a lot he's excited about. What what announcements are you the most excited for, Craiger? The two I'm most excited about is easily hands down. I can't decide which one I'm more excited about. I love them um, both. You know what? I'm, I'm going to have to do it. Okay, so the one I'm second most excited about, and it's like 1A, 1B is Taika Waititi getting his own Star Wars film. He mm-hmm. is one of my favorite directors right now. You know, when I'm old, he may be one of my favorite directors of all time. But right now, he's he's currently like one of my favorite directors. Everything he touches turns to gold. Oh, 100%. So the fact that he the fact that he gets his own Star Wars movie is like, oh, I'm so excited to see where he goes with that. And then everyone can assume what my favorite one is. This Soka uh, spinoff show where it's basically going to be Ahsoka versus Thrawn and it, it's oh, yeah. just going to be so much amazing happy time 
I am calling it right now that Thrawn is going to show up for a minute in The Mandalorian. And here's the reason why is because a lot of casual fans are watching The Mandalorian and they're like, who's Ahsoka? And everyone's all excited about Ahsoka now because they introduced her in The Mandalorian. So now all these people that didn't know her before want to watch a show about her. Well, they don't know who Thrawn is. We know who Thrawn is and we're excited. Mm -hmm. So they're going to have to put Thrawn in The Mandalorian to let people know, like, here's another reason to watch Ahsoka because these two characters that now you are falling in love with are going to have their own spinoff and you want to go see that. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Uh, Joe, how about you? What, what, what are you excited most about for all the Star Wars stuff? Uh, like Krager, Ahsoka had me... Uh... H had my boner set to rager. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> would you say? Would you say it's Rager of the New Republic? Because there's a yeah. new show called <laughs> Rangers of the New Republic coming out. Oh my god! Mandalorian Rangers of the New Republic. Rager of the New Republic. Um, other than Ahsoka, <laughs> ones that I'm excited for. Um, I don't even know if I'm pronouncing it correctly. What is it? Andor. Okay, Cassian are you Andor? actually excited for Andor? Because that's the one I'm least excited about. Because I, I don't care for Cassian Andor. <laughs> Cassian Andor I, doesn't deserve his own show. It's K2SO deserves his K2 own show. S yeah, let's do the K2SO show. <laughs> I think he deserves his own show. I think it could be interesting. But the one that I'm most excited for in its entirety is Obi-Wan Kenobi. Yeah. Oh, that's the yeah. one. Especially, Especially now that Hayden, Hayden Christensen, Christensen is on board. Yes, I want that show so badly. I'm I will so say excited. this, though. So watching Revenge of the Sith last night, Madison and I both kind of looked at each other and were like, Hayden Christensen has no chemistry with anyone on the screen whatsoever in this movie. So I'm a little nervous to, be, to have him come back in the fold because I'm like, you really didn't do a good job in the prequel trilogy. So I'm like, I don't know why they brought him back, but well, the I'm all for is, it. Let's do it. How much of him is actually going to be in it? Because is he just going to be in yeah. a Vader suit? Or is it going to be I can't all bionic? Imagine they, I can't imagine they bring him back just to have him in the suit and have James Earl Jones still voice it. There's no way they're having well, him back just might, to be in the suit. He might be able to take his helmet off just so you can see him, kind of like um, Pascal in Mandalorian. Yeah, but we know that Vader can't Spoilers! really take his helmet off for long expend for long periods of time. He took his helmet off in season hey, one. It's been long enough. Yeah, Pedro Pascal took his helmet <laughs> off in season one. The fact that he took it off in the latest episode is irrelevant. <laughs> oh, that's Spoilers! the first thing. <laughs> Jor <laughs> Jordan, you did kind of like you did kind of have me have a realization right now. I love Anakin so much because of Clone Wars, not because of yes. Hayden Christensen. Well, we need to have that course. guy yeah. come back. I forget his name. Well, of course, speaking of that, how can we not be excited for the Bad Batch? Okay, oh. so here's the thing. The Bad Batch was so cool in season six I or season seven, whatever the last season of Clone Wars was. Bad Batch was so cool. I don't know if I want a whole show about them, though. I'm kind of like, you were cool. But I don't know if you were that cool. Why? It could be like the one group of stormtroopers who's actually trying to go against the Empire. That's true. I mean, I'm fine with it. Like, I'm I'm all, I'm all cool with it. And maybe they'll end up showing up in Rangers of the New Republic because we all know. So Rangers of the New Republic, I assume, is supposed to be led by Cara Dune. Uh, the character by Gina Carina, uh, who is getting a lot of flack on Twitter right now for her alt-right views. So I'm kind I of worried that they might by the be. Way. Her character is great. Her person is kind of trash um, in real life. God, I don't she's, <laughs> oh, she's not the greatest person in the world. So I'm fearful that they're going to start this series with her as a lead. And it's going to get a lot of negative and some reviews because of that. Out. Maybe, well, maybe live action Bad Batch, just a bunch of Tamira Morrison's uh, in prosthetics. I'm just a simple man trying to make my way in the universe. <laughs> <laughs> live well, isn't, action. Isn't Bad Batch clone troopers? Well, isn't Bad Batch animated? I don't think it's live action. So no, it's, wouldn't it's, it is animated. I'm her. just saying. I'm saying it'd be cool to bring them live action then in the Rangers of oh, the New right, Republic right, for like right. an episode to have like a live action like Bo Katan did and everything. Yeah, yeah. Um, but. I think the thing I'm most excited for, you guys didn't even mention the two I'm most excited for, The Acolyte, which is a TV show set in the High Republic era and talks about the Sith being formed. Ooh, that's cool. That. I didn't even hear about that uh, one. Darth, 
Darth Bane anyone? I mean, come on. They have to have Darth Bane as like the central he, character he, in that story. Please tell me he's not just a roided up simp like the other Bane. <laughs> <laughs> no. Darth Bane is where the rule of two came from in the expanded universe. And Darth yep. Bane actually shows up in Clone Wars as a uh, holocron or something for a hot second. He, he's ghost the first thing. one who came up with Bogo. Yes, he did. Came up with Bogo. He <laughs> certainly did. Um, and then the other thing is, did you guys oh. hear? Uh, I think Pat, go go for it, Joe. Oh, I was just gonna say. Um, also, in uh, for Obi Wan Kenobi, we'll finally get resolution of Obi Wan versus Darth Maul. Well, we got that resolution got that. in Rebels. In... Yeah, in Rebels, yeah. they had a one last standoff. Uh, you gotta watch, watch Rebels, Rebels, Joe. Come on, Re <laughs> Rebels is good. You gotta go watch Rebels. <clears throat> you'll you'll see yes. it there. Um, but we will find out that Obi-Wan has an illegitimate child, which should have been Rey. But that, I'm getting beside the point here. Um, so my the other thing I'm super stoked for is they said a Rogue Hold Squadron on. movie is are, coming are you, out. Are you, are you telling me Obi-Wan fucks? Yeah, duh. <laughs> Come on. Uh, it's wow. Ewan McGregor. How can people say no to that face? So um, the Rogue True. Squadron movie directed by Patty Jenkins, who directed both yeah. Wonder Woman movies, that's coming out in 2022 or something, I think. Yeah. Um, but I love Rogue Squadron, the video games. I love Rogue oh Squadron, the books. So good. I love it all. Yeah, yeah. I love it all. So um, a Rogue Star Squadron Wars movie. Star Wars Top Gun, that would be awesome. Seriously, that's what it is. And if they don't have an Ewok in Rogue Squadron, like in the books, I will be very upset. Where this Ewok, <laughs> literally every time it celebrates, they write on the page, yub yub. So, I mean, how can <laughs> you not love this? It's amazing. There's a Gamorrean oh, in Rogue Squadron in the books. Gamora's like, come this? on. <laughs> no, you not Gamora. Oh. Gamorrean. <laughs> the piggies. The big old green piggies. Um, so those those are all the things we're excited for. Hey, did you also hear that the fifth Indi Indiana Jones is still set to come out in 2022? <laughs> what? Mm, yeah. Yeah, yeah the fifth Indiana Jones. Is Shia LaDuce Indiana in Jones. Don't, hold on. Wait, no, wait, wait. he's don't not in it. Four, don't, don't you mean the fourth Indiana Jones? No, this is the fifth one. It's the uh, Kingdom of the Crystal I think you Doom of the, Temple the, the, Crusades. The fourth one, because <laughs> they haven't made a they haven't made With a fourth one. So I don't know what you're talking oh, about. Oh, you're right. This is the fourth one because that's right. Temple of Doom, we don't count. Okay, so this is the fourth hey, one. <laughs> what is wrong with Temple of Doom? You know what's funny? Everyone hates on Crystal Skull. I'm not that opposed to it. I'm fine. There's a few scenes where it's a little like cringy. But what, what Indiana Jones doesn't have those few scenes that are a little cringy? Yeah, I guess I that's fell true. asleep in the theater. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> oh, you're, I woke you're up crazy. Like, okay. I woke up like, what, why Craig, are there what movie don't you fall asleep in? <laughs> Seriously. That's just Craig's <laughs> thing. And I'm then he boy. wildly speculates about why he hates the movie, having not seen the full movie. That's Craig's that, thing. <laughs> that was just one. Just parents. Uh, and Indiana <laughs> Jones, you just said. <laughs> I went I back and rewatched it. I love Cam's analogy of that. It's like going to a restaurant, having a few bites of the appetizer, sleeping through the main course, having a few bites of the dessert and saying, this restaurant sucks. <laughs> hey, speaking of sucks, I want to tell you guys something from the Star Wars universe that's so ridiculous that maybe you've ever heard. Have you guys heard of Mount Sorrow in the Star Wars universe? No. Sounds like we're no. on okay. weekends. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. Let me tell you a little bit about Mount Sorrow. So in 1986, there was an Ewok comic series by, I think, Marvel at the time. So on the forest moon of Endor, where the Ewoks live, there is a mountain called Mount Sorrow. So the tip of this mountain is sentient. And when you make it all the way up there, it it's in a perpetual state of depression. And it either kills you by throwing you off the mountain to your doom or it cries and its tears have the power of healing. This is a real thing in Star Wars at one point. Interesting. And How we, only yeah. the Ewoks have access to this? <laughs> what a waste. <laughs> well, I mean, e the, only the Ewoks know about it because it's on their planet. That's so funny. I wonder if the Empire Endor knew. is their planet. Because they were had they had a base uh, there. I didn't Maybe. I didn't have the I didn't have the I didn't have the 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 wavos to make the joke, Jordan. I appreciate it. Oh, about Endor being their planet? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, let's move on to our next segment, which is Patreon Moving questions. Moving forward. 
We just got a question. We just got a question. We just got a question. It's from Patreon. All right. So we have one Patreon question this week. It's from Marissa, good friend of the show. Also, she makes super cool uh, candles out of beer cans. Beer cans what is it called yeah. Brew and Bougie. Brew and Bougie Brew on and Instagram. Bougie. Yep. So I got yeah. The, uh, so go Dunkaroo check her out. One. Yes, Gregor has one. She makes really awesome ones. A lot of beer zombie stuff, which beer zombie has some of the best can artwork I've ever seen mm-hmm. in my life. But I anyway, she asked. Yes, uh, Craig lo- digs a lot I wanna, of cans. I want to get a candle of the Belching Beaver Deftones cans. Mm. Ooh. Yes, oh, the Phantom okay. Bride. So, so last thing, so we don't, so we don't change it too much. I don't know how I took this long to realize this, but I was talking to someone about um, "Tastes Like Space" by Belching Beaver, and I looked it up because, like, you know what? I really want to see if I can get this. Yeah, they're never making it again. I no, will what? never get to have that happen. Miss Yeah, I Belching Beaver. Belching Beaver typically makes stuff just one-offs, like the Fall of Troy. That was a one-off. That was my favorite beer they ever made, too. It's a bummer. I mean, eventually so, they will remake it years, years, years down the line. They'll probably remake it. I am going to buy so much of it because it is legitimately my favorite beer of all time. Yeah, you guys love Taste Like Space. I wasn't as big of a so fan good. as you guys were. So good. Yeah. I mean, it's okay, but I wasn't like blown out of the water by it. Um, mostly because I don't typically just sit in water. Uh, so that, you know, I was going to say, imagine being getting blown, blown in water. water. Is, getting blown in water isn't, it probably isn't very comfortable either. So <laughs> <laughs> I try it. All right. So what Marissa, speaking of blown in water, Marissa wants to know <laughs> what is slash was the ugliest holiday decoration you or your family put up every year? Oh, ugliest. I have one here. Mm. So when I was younger, my parents would always put this tree topper on the top. On the top I was going to say, I imagine that's what a tree topper a tree does. Topper. Yeah. So our tree topper was this little thing I made in preschool that looked like an angel, but I made it out of like a cone, a cone made out of toilet paper roll, a bunch of like PVC pipe. And it looked like <laughs> the dumbest. Like it looks like I made it in the dark. <laughs> and I didn't have the use of my hands while making it. So they put this thing on top of our tree for like 10 years. And oh I think it God. got quote unquote lost eventually. <laughs> probably got <laughs> thrown out. Uh, but that was the ugliest thing. And I don't know why, but they put it on every year on top of our tree. Sentiment is great and all, but sentiment isn't good enough to put that God awful piece of Jordan artwork on top of a tree every year. <laughs> that sounds like a depression mountain to me. Yes, Mount Sorrow definitely was our tree. <laughs> oh man. Um, I don't know. Like we didn't I don't I've never been a huge decorating for Christmas guy because like I'm always no having the one do do a lot of the putting up and, and tearing down. So I'm like I like to put up as little as possible so I have a lot less to take down. Um Yeah, I don't know, like we just had like a standard star on the top of the tree, so well, that wasn't an issue. It was probably like some dumb ornament I, I me my brother and my sister made when we were kids that that's probably i'd say one of the uglier ones if i had to guesstimate I, we didn't have too many mm-hmm. crazy stuff like you know like the nutcrackers it's here and there some other tchotchkes oh do you guys remember those like balsa wood like little like things for the holidays where you light light the candles and it spins oh yes 100 percent. it's like yeah, the windmill yeah. but it's like a yeah. windmill yeah. mixed Christmas with vacation. a merry-go-round <laughs> Yes, yeah, I totally so, remember those. Those are cool. And the little slats from the windmill would just break off all the time. And by yeah. after like three <laughs> years, so there'd be like only half of them left. <laughs> <laughs> I totally remember that. So, so good. True. All right, Joe, what, what was your ugliest thing you had? <laughs> I can't, like Craig, I can't really think of anything. The only thing that comes to mind is, again, a tree topper. And I know... I know they, some of them can look really cool. A lot of the angels that are put up there, they were essentially like dolls. Some of them look very creepy, almost like you just have Annabelle sitting on the top of your tree. And it, mm-hmm. that's got to be the winner for me. Just some of those angels Annabelle that are, there that tree are just very creepy looking. It looks like they're just staring at you yeah. and their eyes follow you in the room. Ooh, did you have to pay extra for that? Yeah. It's an animatronic. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. All right. So thanks, Marissa, for being a patron. Uh, you're in our raffle. So there you go. Hopefully she wins. Hopefully everyone wins. I want and, everyone and, to win at least once. And remember, you are my number one customer. <laughs> Good callback to our Jingle All the Way episode. Uh, all right. So now moving on to our next segment, which is Call Her Craiger. Do you call him daddy? We call him Craiger. Call him Craiger. Or actually, it's Call Him Craiger, isn't it? I think it's Call Him Craiger. <laughs> it's call, I think it's Call Him Craiger. Okay. Call so him I didn't give Craiger too. any... We never yeah, I didn't give Craiger any notice this week for the uh, two questions I have because um, one of them's from Joe Gennaro, one of them's from oh. girlfriend of the podcast, Corey. So wow. uh, we'll we see. got some we got some listener write-ins. It's awesome. Yeah, we'll see how you do here. And then oh. the next time I'll give you some ones if uh, no one asks legitimate questions. So here's Joe Gennaro's question. He says, my girlfriend and I have been together for seven years, and it's safe to say that we're pretty serious. We moved in together after a year. When do you think will be a good time to say I love you? For context, we have never said it to each other yet, and I don't want to scare her off if I say it too early. Help me, Craiger. You're my only hope. From your dad, Joe. How long did you say they've been together? Seven Over years. Year. You said they've been together for seven years and have not said I love you to each other. Yes. So when's a good okay. time to say this, it? I mean, I'm a terrible person to ask about this because I'm an I love you slut. So like That's you all very know I'm a very loving Ted Mosby over here. person. Like I say I love you to people all the time. In relationships, that is a very hard thing to do because you know, I guess won't go too you deep in this. Yourself up, you it, get vulnerable. Exactly. You know, like and I'm a very I I love people just as I'm a very loving human being. So I love people as is. So, you know, but I guess to say, I love you to someone you're in a relationship with it. One, it's kind of more like a feel thing between both of them because you don't want it to be a one-sided thing. So it is kind of like, I don't know if you have open, honest communication, like it's one of those things where when you feels right, it feels right. Um, not saying it for seven years. Um, I, I don't know how to, to, to respond to that because that doesn't that that seems like you're playing I love you chicken and you're both losing. So <laughs> now, Craig, let well, me I appreciate. Um, yes, ask him. What's Joe. your average time? In what's your average time before you say I love you? Um. So like two years ago, Craiger, like. <laughs> um, I'd say, <laughs> oh, this is cringy. I'm like pretty soon, like the second date, definitely less we than need... two months. <laughs> definitely. No. Like if, if I'd say if we're talking about like, once you become official, then I'd say usually like very pretty shortly after, depending on how long you've been dating before that. But I'm Have used you ever to said I long. love you without Matt, being official. I think so. <laughs> but then again, there might have been really times where I was really drunk that. and I don't remember it. So is that uh recommended <laughs> on uh Craiger segment here? Um, I don't recommend saying I love you when you're not official. And I and I and if you say I love you when you're when you're blacked out drunk, just remember whatever you say when you're blacked out drunk is none of your business. <laughs> well, I really I really appreciate Craiger answer trying to answer this question so sincerely because this when joe asked one. me i well it's Go very ahead. difficult and when joe asked me i had to reach out to him and be like what is happening here and uh he said it's actually not true <laughs> he yeah, just I'd hope they not. said i love you to I'd, each other i'd hope so i was all like he just like, wanted I, to see I, how I, you would I, respond to I this mean, my 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 honest answer if you've been with someone for seven years and aren't saying i love you to each other might want to get out of that relationship because i don't think it's going well, anywhere if you're if you live with someone and you're not saying I love you to them, th is that your roommate? Like that's not really your <laughs> partner, then, is it? So uh, I don't know. She, I just I just hopped on Could her Amazon Prime account and I can't leave now. <laughs> I need that Netflix password. I've I've bought I've become too used to having Amazon Prime and I I can't show it to fifteen bucks a month. It's too much. Oh, that's funny. 
All right. So the second question is from uh, Cam's girlfriend, Corey, uh, who they live together. And I'm sure they say I love you all the time. She says, at what point in the relationship would you introduce felching? Also, do you prefer butt plugs with the jewels or with the tails? Now, I don't know what felching is. Does anyone, and I don't want to Google it. If she's asking, she, wait, she said felching. I don't want to go felching. F e l c h i n g. I don't want to Google that for fear of what might pop up. I'm gonna assume belch. I'm assuming the only two outcomes that are farting and belching, or felching might be both of them at the same time. Which that's what I was thinking. I mean, or. We've all been maybe there. when you when like you're when you're down maybe like when you're down there in the badlands digging up dinosaur bones and they let one loose while you're deep in the caverns in the badlands digging up dinosaur bones what yeah you know you got your little brush you're blowing on them brushing them off <laughs> and to answer her but my, second question. I, I, it's all about the jewel. Yeah, I want to know. I want to know about the jewels or the tail, Craig. It's all about the jewel. Prefer? The tail can be fun, but it's also cumbersome because you got to constantly move it out of the way. I, I, I want to know what Craig would pick. The, the second part of the question, I will defer to Joe. He he probably is more experienced in that area than I am. Um, Plus, but, the jewel looks nice. Uh, yeah, <laughs> girls See, I like shiny things. It would be, be too distracting. <laughs> <laughs> um but uh as far as let's just let's just go with when is an appropriate time to introduce belching and farting in a relationship um belching isn't that like obviously you don't want to like do it all the time but like listen we're bought we're humans you have a soda you have a beer you know a belch can come out very easily so obviously you don't want to like do it all the time discussing but like people do it it's no big deal you know like if i'm dating a girl and she burps on like the second or third date like i'm not gonna like and we had some beer or like we had some soda, like I'm not going to say anything. No, like it happens, you know, you, it's a part of your body. It has to come out as far as farting though. Um, that one, ah, I try to keep that one tucked away for as long as you can. That one's just more like when it, it, so it under it, the covers, it, it, when it happens, it happens. And you just, you just, I think that roll, I think the time the in my life when I think the time in my life, when I turn the corner where I have no problem farting, around anyone was due to was due to Joe's dad because we were in high school and we were going to a high school football game and on the way we drove through Tommy's burger and I asked for mine without chili because at the time I didn't like chili it was like ninth grade and your dad Joe said what ammo are you going to have to fight the guys with tonight then if you don't get chili on your burger <laughs> and from that moment I was like yeah you're right I should be farting in everyone's face <laughs> you got to be was, prepared one of my favorite things that my dad said, because I thought it was so funny, it was when he was driving Jordan, you and I, to Andy McCain's house for, I don't know, uh -huh. like a get together Super Bowl or something. And we were, he was dropping us off. And at the same time that he was dropping us off, Andy's grandma was walking in the door. And my dad saw her and, and he said, Hey, I didn't know you guys were having live entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> It's so funny. <laughs> oh my God. Your dad's the best. So funny. I remember oh. the time, Joe, your mom was driving us to a soccer game and you put on um, Ass Like That by Eminem. And like yeah. halfway through the song, your mom's like, well, this is no good. <laughs> I could just see her like, okay, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's not, it can't get any worse. It's gonna stop, but no, it doesn't. Well, I don't think she cared that Joe and I were in the car, but there were like three other kids on the soccer team in the car. Yeah, that she didn't really know. So. Oh man, that's she's like, funny. oh, I'm gonna get calls uh, from parents. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, so anyway, uh, that little side tangent brings us back around to uh, also, if you have a relationship question you want to ask Craig, write in, let us know. He'll answer it for you as he did with these ones. If you don't write in, I'm going to have to come up with something for him to answer. <laughs> so next week, but let's move into stoked on this. While we haven't heard or seen it, there was something to perceive A rumble time that hype give us something to believe All when they chose to focus emphasis, we're forming a hypothesis But all we really know is that we're stoked on this Stoked on this Stoked on this All right, so we talked a lot about things we're stoked on at the beginning already With the whole Disney stuff, but is there anything else you guys are stoked on right now? 
Yes. I get to come home for like eight, two and a half weeks um, in less than a week. I am very excited about that. Christmas break. Very nice. <laughs> exactly. I'm not going to be up. So I will not be working for like two and a half weeks and I just get to relax and just have fun and well, it's California. So not having fun, oh. but well, you'll get to play the Xbox everything One is a bunch. Open by then. Well, oh, I mean, it won't I brought be. it with me. It's right. <laughs> It's right here. I trust me. That thing came with me. It's it's uh, right no, I mean, you sure have all the time in the world you. to play it. <clears throat> That's, That's true. true. Well, I'm excited. Um, get to you know see Joe and all them, see my family, see friends, see Johnny, see my puppy, um, mm-hmm. see s- some other people. Yeah, maybe you can hang out with the uh, second best Jordan from Santa Clarita. Uh, yes, the uh, the the Jordan part two. Yeah, yeah, Nega Jordan. Uh. So, Joe, what are you stoked on? And Joe, if you don't say one thing I have on here, I'm going to be very disappointed in you. Uh, There's really only, besides the Star Wars and Marvel and all the Disney news, there's only really one thing that got me super stoked. And that is there came a teaser trailer and new development for a brand new Mass Effect game, which takes place after the third installment. It's the continuation story. I am so excited about this. It's going to be the greatest game on the planet. Oh, I can't wait. Get get Mass Effect Andromeda out of here. This is the game we deserve. This is what I was hoping we would bring up. This is what Andromeda was supposed to be. Yes, dude. And in the trailer, I think that was, uh, what was her name? Liara to Sony. I think that was her yeah. and your group of like Rex and everyone in the background. And she picks up the N7 armor. And so I'm like, okay, let's do this thing. <laughs> I am so excited. The only thing I wonder is how they're going to start it since obviously at the end of Mass Effect 3, like all the other Mass Effects that came before it, you essentially chose your ending and the decisions you made up to that point changed your pathway. So I'm curious on how it's going to still play off of that on your previous decisions. Well, well, here's the problem. The biggest complaint with Mass Effect 3 was that no matter what choices you made through the whole game, they all ended in the same thing. Shepard pretty much dying. I think there was one way where you were able to make it where the Reapers took over him and he lived but killed everyone else being the vessel for the Reapers. But that was like an Easter egg ending. Well, no, there's also an ending of Mass Effect 3 where everyone dies, but there's a t- uh, an end credit teaser there where you see it shows kind of like the rubble and it shows Shepard's N7 armor like laying there in, uh, mixed with all the rubble. And then you see his armor take a breath and then it cuts out. Yes. I was only mostly dead. Try finding that option on government paperwork. Yeah, I mean, I they they got to bring Shepard back in some way or oh, another. I don't know if to. he's going to be... Yeah, I don't know if he's going to be the central character or like what's going to happen, but or it could they be definitely the, need to bring him back. The counterpart to what you, whatever shepherd you chose, if you chose the male shepherd, you can now play the female shepherd. That's the one that comes out or vice versa. I'm good with that. That would be super too. awesome. But th- I don't think there's I don't think there's any way this game is going to be connected to the decisions you made in the original trilogy because they're just too far apart right now. I can't see how it, I think they're all going to start at the same point. And then they're going to yeah, play I agree. with like, I just, yeah, we'll see. Uh, Craig, what I you think say? of <clears throat> one thing really excited for the new Spider-Man that's coming out. We're going to get um, three Spider-Men and we're getting the mm-hmm. same guy come back, coming back as Doc Ock. Like, yes. And a lot of other characters are coming back. Emma Stone, Jamie, Emma Stone, Emma uh, Stone, Kirsten Electro. Dunst. Yeah. Yes. Jamie Foxx. And Jamie Foxx. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he's coming gosh, back. It's going to be so good. It's essentially going to be every character you know from any Spider-Man movie from 2000 on. Is it's going to probably be in this movie. Yeah, it's going to play off with Doctor Strange's multiverse movie that's coming out too. Which is probably yeah. going to play off of WandaVision. Yeah. So I well, think we're going to have they, this they through line. That, that, they're, that, um, they're all going to connect. Uh, well, the, uh, that Olsen is, our, is in England right now filming that movie. So Love it. Love it. I'm all for it. I love the whole House of M thing. Uh, House of M in the comics ends with the destruction of the mutants, where I think in this universe, it's going to create the mutants. So we'll see kind of how this all goes about. Do you have any uh, hope that the Fantastic Four can be re-resurrected in the cinematic universe? If anyone can do it, Marvel can. But um, I'm not holding my breath, honestly. I think... 
if anything, it'll just be passable. I don't think it's going to be amazing. I think it's just going to be passable. I don't know. I I enjoyed the first Fantastic Four with um Chris Evans. I thought that was enjoyable because yeah, you were but ten when had, it came out. Exactly. And we should had, do that and for and a cast. Alba. <laughs> no, believe me. I tried to rewatch it, Madison and I, like a year or two ago, and we got about twenty minutes in. I was like, yeah, I don't think I want to do this on the podcast. <laughs> Try watching the it's newest bad. one. Oh, oh, I don't. I don't, uh, don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to. Okay, so what I'm excited for is talking about movies you should watch. So there's a movie from the 1940s that I'm a huge fan of, directed by Alfred Hitchcock. It's Mono's called Handsome Rebecca. Bait. No, it's called Rebecca. <laughs> Have you guys heard of this movie? No. No. no? Okay. No. Rebecca <laughs> is really, Mont- really I've heard good. Of Montana. <laughs> Hannah Montana. Uh, it's it's no. Montana. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Montana. <laughs> so anyway, Rebecca is this really awesome movie that starts off as kind of like a drama and then turns into a horror film and then turns into a thriller and then turns into a crime procedural. Very Al- Alfred Hitchcockian. Great movie. But the problem is it's from the 1940s, so it's a little hard to watch nowadays. But they just made a remake of it on Netflix in 2020, which is actually is it already really out? close to the... Yes, it's out. I, I, me and Madison watched it the other night. It's really close to the original story. It's really well done. And it has Army Hammer in it in an actually good role. Army Hammer See, uh, cousin hasn't of had... MC? Uh, no, <laughs> not a cousin of MC. <laughs> Army, Army Hammer played the, the, the Winklevoss twins in the social network. And he also played the Lone Ranger in everyone's favorite iteration of the Lone Ranger with his, Johnny his Depp. His name is Army Hammer? Yes, that's his name. You're mm-hmm. telling me he's, he's not wrong... related to MC. <laughs> no, he is not related to MC. He he is related to Black and Decker. So I really hope his dad's name and, is Rich. MC. I really it's hope ridiculous. his dad's name is Richard. Dick Hammer. Dick Hammer. <laughs> <laughs> Drop the hammer. So anyway, go watch Rebecca. <laughs> Go watch Rebecca on Netflix uh, so that you don't have to trudge through a 1940s black and white version of it. But the 1940s black and white version is really good if you like old movies. So watch that one, too. It's They're both awesome. But if you're more like, I want a movie that's color and now, Rebecca on Netflix, and highly now. recommended. <laughs> yeah, it's my color movie and, and I want now. it now. Exactly. All right, guys, we're moving on to our last segment of the show. That's right, the plugs, because we're not doing trivia this week because Cam was supposed to bring trivia and he canceled last second on us. So Craiger, by default, gets to hold on to that uh, title another another time. But we are done with the show, guys. You can follow us on Instagram or I guess Twitter, but we never post on Twitter because Twitter is trash. Twitter Twitter is garbage. Oh, Joe stole your... your uh, <laughs> Joe's got your championship there. How did that happen? I feel feel so naked. (laughs) But anyway, give us a rating or review. Uh, Review will get you a sticker, and we really highly appreciate that. Go to wreckmypodcast.com for all the ways you can support us. There's a Redbubble store. There's a Patreon. There's an Amazon link. It's all on there. And come back next week for our final Christmas episode. Not sure what we're doing it on yet, but we'll figure it out. And then we'll do a round round table once the new year hits again. And Craig will have to defend that championship, actually. So, guys, thank you for being here. And thank you to our listeners, because without you, we wouldn't have a reason to go onto <laughs> a terrible platform that keeps freezing oh, on us and talk to each other every week. Okay. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> oh, there we are. I um, like and I love you all. Um, <laughs> you froze again. <laughs> I, I I know. That's why I said terrible platform. <laughs> In the unknown. Uh, Let's go. I don't even know all Samantha. Right. Well, you can get whatever you want. Otherwise, we just skip a beer review segment. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I are we I really going to review a Corona? <laughs> no, I'm, I know. I drink. It's I drink been enough on the podcasts the past three episodes. I drank enough last <laughs> night as it is. So, yeah. All right, let's do the uh, let's do the sync real quick here.
Cool. Joe, you're all choppy over there. Am I? Yeah. Our Wi-Fi has been acting up lately. I've, I'm going to be calling them later today. That's so weird. Yeah, I mean, I can hear you fine. It's just your video is choppy, so we might lose video on you. But it usually still records it and uploads it, which is all good. Okay, that works. Cool. All right, I'm going to bring us in uh, to a round around table because obviously Craig has something to do today. Clearly. What you got going on, Begs? <laughs> I'm going to watch the Charger game. Of course, that's what I thought <laughs> oh, it was. I, I, I was like, it's probably it's, football. Lis, listen, it's the only because they're playing Atlanta. It's the, it's the only Charger game I'll actually get to watch on TV out here. And like, hey, if, it's if fine everyone with said me. That, if, if everyone said they couldn't do it, I had no problem sense. sticking with the regular time. Like, I was just like, hey, if we can do it, cool. If not, no big deal. So it's fine with me. It's pouring rain here all day today, so it's like really gloomy and just a good day to stay inside anyway. And we, it did say it was supposed to rain or snow this afternoon, but um, wow, it's not going to snow now. So we still got to wait for that. One of these days, we'll get snow over here. 